this is Sarah with Precision Camera in Austin, Texas. And today I am really, really excited because I have a brand new camera and a brand new lens from one of my favorite manufacturers of all time. I have a brand new X-T3 and I have the 200 F2. We're out on South Congress and we're gonna take both for a test run. Before we get into talking about the 200 millimeter, I really wanted to kind of run through the specs on the X-T3. This is the brand new X-Trans 4 sensor. It is a 26 megapixel sensor. This also has the X-Processor 4, which is a brand new processor. It helps a lot in low light capabilities and the speed of this camera, which is kind of the big selling point here. The ISO range on this camera is 160 to 1280. That's up from 200 as a native base ISO. It's expandable from 80 to 51,200. Similar to what we find in an X-T2 or an X-H1, the mechanical shutter on this camera goes up to 1 8,000th of a second. The electronic shutter goes up to 1 32,000th of a second. Now something that is brand new about this camera and is really one of the hottest talking points is the fact that in an electronic shutter, this camera can shoot up to 30 frames per second. It achieves that in this brand new sports finder mode. When you're in this mode, you do get a crop factor of 1.25, but you have zero blackout. This is something that sports shooters and action photographers are going to absolutely love. Without a grip, this camera can shoot up to 11 frames per second in mechanical shutter and up to 14 frames per second in the electronic shutter. The other significant differences in this camera that are really huge talking points is the upgrades in the video department. This camera can shoot UHD 4K at 60 frames per second. It can also shoot DCI 4K at 30 frames per second. We also have the ability to shoot in 1080 at 120 frames per second. In addition to all of that, this camera can also do 10-bit internal 420 and 422 10-bit out. That's huge. We don't even have that in the X-H1. Now, all of that being said, there are still some serious advantages to going with the X-H1 for video, and a lot of that has to do with the fact that the X-H1 has in-body stabilization. This does not. Now, a lot of their lenses have great optical stabilization, but nothing really compares to in-body stabilization. If you're a videographer and you're doing quick run and gun stuff and you are not trying to put this on a stabilizer or build out cage, build out whole system, the X-H1 is still gonna have some significant advantages if you just wanna do handheld. Let's talk about the body for a second. Full magnesium alloy, completely weather sealed, and to be honest, until you take a good look at the little X-T3 symbol right here, it looks and feels and functions just like an X-T2. We have two UHS-2 card slots. We have an articulating screen that flips out vertically and horizontally. Big, huge, bright viewfinder that we've grown to love with Fuji cameras. And the back screen is also super bright and really easy to see in the sun. Now, something that is a big change that I definitely appreciate is the fact that we now have USB-C out. This is super convenient, especially for all you Mac users that don't have any other ports. We also have a microphone in. We have a headset in so you can monitor your audio levels and we have HDMI out. Similar to what we find on the X-T2, we have an ISO dial, we have a shutter speed dial, and of course your aperture dial is gonna be on the lens. However, you could always use one of these dials here if you would rather use those instead. Both of these dials do have a locking mechanism, so you can do full rotation or you can lock it and they stay put. Something that is different about this camera compared to the X-T2 is the touch screen. Now, this isn't just touch focus and touch to shoot like we've seen in some other Fuji cameras. We can actually pull up the quick menu and navigate it using the touch screen. I'm really glad they finally implemented this in the camera because it just makes things so much easier to navigate and makes changes really, really quick. So I want to start shooting with the X-T3 and one of the very first things I noticed is how fast this camera turns on. It starts in a 0.3 seconds. It's like instantaneous. I'm super excited we have Zan with us today. Hi. Now the first thing I want to really test on this is the autofocus system. There's definitely some changes from the previous system. We still have 425 cross-type points. However, 
the phase detection points, we have over 2 million and they cover nearly the entire frame, top to bottom, left to right. This also, because of the new processor, focuses about one and a half times faster than the X-T2. Another new feature that they've put in this is facial recognition and eye recognition in continuous autofocus. And you can even customize it to specifically be looking for the left eye or the right eye. So let's try it out. So what I'm noticing that's really cool is it's giving me a box around her face and then another smaller box right around her eye. So whether I zoom in or out or I move or she moves, it's really effectively tracking her and keeping her face in focus. Pretty much every single frame was in focus. Now it wasn't super aggressive speed wise, but the accuracy was pretty awesome, especially because the little box stayed on your face the whole time. So this camera does have a touch screen. You can use it to touch to focus or touch to shoot. The screen is definitely really responsive. It feels like it's responding quicker and more accurately than other Fuji models. I'm gonna test out the video features of this camera. So just as a reminder, this does DCI true 17 by nine 4K at 30 frames per second. It does UHD 4K, which is what we see most people using at 60 frames per second. This is huge because now this means you can take this in the post and slow it down into slow-mo, which I'm super excited to see how that turns out. This also has F-Log, so you have a really flat profile for grading. It also has Eterno, which is a really lovely cinematic color profile. So remember, we're not just talking about the camera in this video. We're also talking about ooh, the 200 millimeter. It comes in this really awesome case. It comes with the 1.4 teleconverter as well. Let's check it out. <laughs> Here it is. I personally love the green around the rim of the hood the bokehlicious lens. And if you judge me for saying that word, I really don't care. This lens is such an amazing feat by Fuji. The sample images I've seen from it are some of the most beautiful pics. I cannot wait to shoot it on my own. This is a 305 millimeter equivalent on an APS-C size sensor. It goes from F2 to F22. We have 19 elements in 14 groups. We have one super ED element and two ED elements to help with chromatic aberration. Something I love about this lens, even though it is really, really big, it is a 105 millimeter thread on the filter. So you can technically buy filters for this. You can get a polarizer, you can get an ND. There's no drop in needed. This one has five stops of image stabilization. Ready for action. This is not a small lens by any means. It weighs just barely under five pounds. This lens is weather sealed in 17 points and can withstand temperatures down to 14 degrees Fahrenheit. Now that I got this on the camera, let's go test it out.
Okay, enough of using the 16 to 55. I want to try out the 200 millimeter. This is definitely one hell of a lens. It is super huge, but the image quality is so good. Let's see, let's try it out. The depth of field on this lens is worth all the hype. The X-T3 is one of the best releases from Fujifilm thus far. Its autofocus capabilities, speed, and ergonomic handling, all for a competitive price point, make this camera ideal for professionals looking to upgrade as well as beginners looking for an awesome camera to grow into. Regardless of any pre-production quirks in our experience today, the camera was still quite the beast and handled well. In addition, the 200mm lens is just something else. It is really exciting to see Fujifilm enter the pro telephoto realm with a lens of this caliber. The glass quality and the depth of field capabilities with this lens are remarkable and do not disappoint. Thanks so much for joining us on this adventure around South Congress. Hit subscribe and keep an eye out for our next adventure. <laughs>